Uh, friends, today I am going to speak about a specific module uh, which is pertaining to sociology and the title of the module is Development of Sociology in India. Uh, this is basically a 10 hours uh, coursework which incorporates the different aspect of the issues dealing with how sociology has developed in India. Especially when we try to speak about the development of sociology in India, one thing that is shared is that it basically speaks about a different trajectory because we know that sociology has emerged in the European nation, but when we try to speak about the development of sociology in India, it has a specific trend. So, the uniqueness of the Indian sociology has to be seen separately and that is the basic idea and the thrust of this uh, curriculum. I think. Uh, this curriculum is basically designed to keep in view that what were the basic emergence forces which has led to the emergence of sociology as a discipline and keeping that particular thing in mind, we basically will be talking about the growth of Indian sociology in the specific setting, especially we try to deal with certain issues like what were the various sociological imprints the pioneering works and also what were the basic aspects especially the current of the undercurrents of the nationalism or the fight for the freedom struggle, the inclination of the American sociology towards India and also the European traditions and how the mesmerization of all these things has led to the emergence of sociology as a discipline in India. And within that we are basically speaking about that what were the prominent institutions where the sociology has emerged. Like we try to speak about that sociology has emerged in the Bombay school and the Bombay school uh, which has its prominence with the contribution of Professor G. S. Gure who is claimed to be the founding father of Indian sociology. But before that also uh, there were certain contribution like we have the contribution of Patrick Gates who has been seen as an important figure with regard to the emergence of sociology in India. Along with that, we have Professor B. N. Seal who has taken pain to have the Calcutta School of Sociology. Similarly, when we try to move to the north, we have the Lucknow uh, School of Traditions where we have great sociologists like Professor D. P. Mukherjee, Professor R. K. Mukherjee and Professor A. K. Saran. And beyond that, we have the long legacy. Similarly, we have the Mysore school uh, where you have Professor M. N. Srinivas, Professor S. C. Dubey was there uh, at Sagar. So, gradually we try to see that sociology has expanded in the different states in a specific framework and that is how we try to see that sociology has its own beginning in a specific way. And accordingly, we have the different school of thought which we try to see in terms of specific perspective. And when we try to speak about these issues, I think one important question that comes in mind is that there is a need for the indigenization of sociology. Because initially we try to speak about the debate in terms of sociology in India and sociology for India. And it is followed by the indigenization of sociology. The sociology in India basically tries to deal with those aspects like what were the pioneers, who were the institutions and what were the various perspective. But when we try to speak about the sociology for India, I think we are trying to see the uniqueness of the sociology which has developed in India. And gradually it has moved down to the uh, third level of uh, uh, what you can say understanding that is talking about the indigenization where we try to speak about uh, not only the uniqueness, but also a sort of distinctiveness which is going to be at a global map. And it is basically a plea for self-realization. That is the, the level of uh, expansion of sociology which we are going to deal with. But these things cannot be understood without the specific perspectives and keeping those things in mind, we have tried to put this course into various perspectives like the first perspective which we will be talking about is the Indological perspective and where we have to see the contribution of 
professor gs gore professor luis jimo and many other important sociologists and in logical perspective which is seen as a textual perspective trying to have an uh, interconnection with the interpretation of the ancient text and how this knowledge is going to build up the understanding of indian society similarly another important perspective which see which is seen as a, a shift from the initial departure of the indological perspective is the structural functional perspective and in that we have prominent people like professor amin shrivas and professor s c dubey who try to speak about and debate out the issue of the field view and which is just opposite and counter to the so called indological school of thought so we have the field view where you have the notion of participant observation and through that the insights which can be gained and which can be interpreted in a sociological way after that we have another important perspective that is the civilizational perspective and within that we have two prominent scholars professor n k bose and professor surjit sinha who have their own contribution to understand the civilization which is to be seen in terms of the accommodation of the little and the great traditions towards the higher end and there of course we try to speak about the contributions of these people in terms of the tribal and the non tribal interaction present and the urban society interaction so that is how we try to see the linkage between the different traditions of the indian society and how they are to be seen in terms of a unity towards a larger end and apart from that we sometimes had borrowed certain things from the european tradition and within that categorization marxian perspective appears to be called sound and the marxian perspective basically deals with how we can analyze the development of sociology in india with regard to the marxian framework especially the economic determinism the dialectics which is involved and also we try to see certain amount of alienation if it is there and for that uh, we had two prominent sociologists uh, professor a r desai whose famous work the social background of indian nationalism we are going to talk about and also the contribution of dp mukherjee through diversities where he is trying to speak about the mark he is claimed to be the marxologist and how he is trying to understand the marxology of marx in the indian framework with regard to the dialectics of tradition and modernity in india and apart from that we have certain other specific perspective which we can see as the contemporary perspective like we will be talking about the feminist perspective where we have to have an analysis of the feminine aspect especially the contribution of uh, sharmila rege is going to be significant and we have many other people who had spoken about the invisibility of the women with regard to the development of sociology in india similarly we also have the subaltern perspective which basically speaks about the voices of the voiceless or the uh, what you can say the understanding of those people whose voice has not been heard in the making of the history and it basically is a project which talks about talks about the understanding of society from the masses and which we try to see as rewriting the history keeping in view those people who have been neglected in the construction of history of india similarly we also are going to speak about the contribution of the environmental perspective how the environmental debate has come into prominence with regard to the understanding of the various developmental issues in india and for that uh, ramchandra guha's special contribution cannot be ignored where we are going to speak about that how ramchandra guha has led to the understanding of the environmental issues especially the chipko movement and many other issues which has come up especially the unquiet wood which of course is a prominent work where he is trying to sort of a linkage between the social structure the state and the people in that sense as such and how these things are going to bring about the new arrangements in the indian society and finally we also will be talking about the dalit perspective which of course is seen as more lively even in the contemporary india in the double dalit perspective we will be basically talking about the contribution of ambedkar and also the contribution of gail omwet who is trying to see the understanding of the dalits basically the marginalized sections of the societies the the, the scheduled caste in that sense as such and how these peoples have shown the level of assertion the political assertion uh, in the various aspect so this whole course if you try to see is going to touch upon the understanding of the social phenomenon from the various perspective and these perspectives 
are helpful for understanding the wider uh, meaning of the Indian society. And in this way, this course definitely is a topic of interest for all those who wanted to understand and explore the Indian societies from the various dimensions. Because as we all know that for understanding the common thing, we can have the different way of looking. And these different way of looking can give the new insights and the new thought process. Yeah, one can definitely say that these perspectives which are being shared are not the ultimate. We can have many or more perspectives which can be thought of like we can have the ethnographic perspective, we can have the Weberian perspective or certain other perspective in the lines of symbolic interactionism that has to be seen especially ethnosociology is one important perspective which can also be thought of. So, we try to cover up the possibilities of perspectives which are there which will help us to understand what sort of imprints have been generated at the initial phase of the development of sociology in India and what were the undercurrents which has made us to think or develop sociology in a specific perspective. And in that way, this interaction and this module is going to make you more meaningful and also will help you in understanding the social phenomenon in a more specific sense, in a more discipline rigorous way and also you will have the new thoughts and insights which will help us to really understand the Indian society in a diverse way. So, with all these aspects which I try to just generalize, uh, I think that uh, uh, once we deal with the different aspect, things will be more brighter and clear to you and definitely uh, the sort of uh, interaction that we will have is going to make us more fruitful and more knowledgeable. With all these words, I welcome you to this particular course and I hope that the limitations if any are there for that I can be excused. But whenever, wherever the suggestions are there, I will try to incorporate in the future course of action. So, with these words, I formally welcome you to have a nice interaction about the understanding of the development of sociology in India. Thank you.